Hey DIYers, today we got a simple project to do, and that is redo my attic access. So unfortunately, I don't have ladder access, and I'll show you why that can't be possible here in a minute before you go getting crazy saying, Put in the ladder! Anyway, you can see it's pretty grungy looking, and these holes are where I've already had to pull this trim once. I've got people coming tomorrow to replace my whole HVAC system in order for it to get it up into the attic, which is where all mine is. This piece has to come off. So, and two, it doesn't fit real well. See, if I push it all the way over, this big hole here here or a gap there or falls out so they didn't cut it very well when I put it in and when the lights are out in the hallway and I turn the attic light on you can see that I've got light that's shining through underneath there so I'm losing a fair amount of heat and air conditioning through this area so not only am I going to replace it repaint it but I'm also going to insulate it I'll go up in the attic and show you why it's not possible for me to put a ladder in this area right here so as you can see, there's my attic access right there, and there's my furnace, and that's all the room I've got. And if you go that direction, the roof slopes so much, you can't really put one in there, and I got ductwork there. So you see, there's no real good way around it, because I'm definitely not going to move my HVAC system over so I can put one in. Two, I can't go that way because of how the roof slopes so quick right there. And I know what you're thinking, well, do it over your garage. Well, my garage is right over in that area there, but it's not a really good spot over there either. And I'll show you the other problem as to why I can't do it there. So I'm stuck with this right here and to boot when they put this in it's not even square this end it's at 30 inches this ends it's 32 inches so we're going to redo it and put a whole new piece in here i'm going to reuse the trim because the trim is a solid piece of mdf that they cut a hole in just to fit on and it's still good i'm going to use it again but i'm basically going to replace the mdf cover and like i say i think it's warped up because of well the attics are hot in texas in the summer and it's just warped due to the moisture so i'm going to do a couple things hopefully to stop that and we're going to insulate this so i don't lose so much heat through here and well as as you can see I got too much crap in my garage to put it out here I couldn't definitely put it over in this area at all because in order to hang this thing because it got so much weight on it I had to put extra bracing and stuff up in the attic over here so I couldn't put a ladder there I guess I could get it here the attic access is right over there furnace runs to about here so I don't have any room there I could do here but again the roof slopes so bad you couldn't put it in so really the only place to put it to be kind of right over in here well I got a light garage door opener it really isn't gonna work and I'm not going to go through the trouble to make it work. So how's that? So how are we going to fix this? Well, let's get started. So this is three-quarter MDF, and I couldn't find, a, especially at Lowe's or Home Depot, they wouldn't sell me just half a sheet. So I had to buy a whole sheet of this stuff. So, but I was able to get them to cut it, which was free. First two cuts were free, and I got them to cut it to 32 inches. The rest I got stored in the garage. I'm sure I'll find a project someday that'll use it. But we're going to do 30 inches square. And I've already checked that this edge and this edge are all square to each other. So I'm going to cut everything off down here instead of trying to square this edge up, which isn't square. So we'll take and measure off 30 inches, and then we need 30 inches this way. This is going to be too big and cumbersome to put under my table saw and do. So I've got a straight edge that I can use and run my circular saw down to get this all cut. Okay, I got my straight edge set up. Because this is MDF and that dust is kind of carcinogenic, toxic, and whatever, I'm going to wear a mask. I've got this set so my blade width is taken into account. Now I'm going to make sure it fits. Just be safe before I move on with primering. I got to trim just a little off because of the rafter clips they got up in here. Easy fix. Take off about a quarter of an inch. Okay. Here we go, like a glove. Very little side to side. And even if you move it all the way to a side, you don't have light exposure. And when I turned off the lights and looked, I didn't see any light shining underneath it. But we're good. They used half inch particle board is what they had in there. And obviously I'm going thicker with this three quarter MDF. Could have done plywood, but again, yeah. And I'm just doing MDF because the molding itself is MDF. I'm just kind of keeping the theme MDF. So I'm going to take some 220, my random orbital sander, and scuff up both surfaces just so that the primer sticks really well. Because as you may know, this MDF is pretty slick when it comes out. So one thing I want to do before I primer that is I want to mark out for this insulation. Now all this is is 2 inch insulation from Home Depot. I just want to use the board as a template and I'll just take my circular saw and cut it out. But I want to do that before I prime. So I'll just take a pin, mark along the edges. And I got the other half of this sheet. I'll mark out two of those. From the bottom of my molding, 
to the top of the rafters in there is right around six and a quarter inches. So with this plus insulation, three sheets, gives me six and three quarter inches. So I'm gonna be like a half inch taller and that should be just fine. And also the reason I'm doing it this way is I couldn't find any insulation kits that would work for my size opening. I know for the ladder type accesses to your attic, they do have insulation kits that go over them, but I couldn't find one for this. So this is how I'm doing it. I moved into my garage here to primer this because well, it looks like it might rain and I don't have to do it in the rain. So what I'm using for this MDF is I'm using this Ben Zenzer's primer. Say that fast three times. It's a shellac based primer. That's what you need to use for this MDF so that it'll actually coat it and not, if you use a water base, it soaks in, makes it rough and it takes even more coat. So this Benzer uh, should do the trick really well. I'm just using a six inch roller, kind of a medium nap. It's a cheap roller because when I'm done, I'm just gonna throw it away. I've got a little tray here that I can pour into to do it with and we'll get it primed. Now I'm gonna primer this top section and the edges. It takes about 15 minutes to dry to the touch. Then I'll flip it over and, and primer the other side. And it's 45 minutes before you can recoat. I'm gonna try and put a really heavy coat on this first one, and then I'm gonna sand it and put a second coat on because I'm looking for a glass smooth finish when I'm all done. And the reason I'm just using a brush I can or a roller I can throw away is because I don't want to have to get out the alcohol and all that kind of stuff to clean this with because you can't clean it with soap and water. Alrighty, this stuff is watery, watery, watery. I know one thing I forgot to do with this brand new roller, and that was to run some tape over it and denap it. So I got little pieces of napping in the coat but that's okay i'm gonna sand it out I'll let this dry for 15 minutes i'll turn it over primer it, and we'll move on and while that's drying i gotta give that 45 minutes before i can sand i'm gonna cut this insulation now i'm just gonna do it out here for two reasons one my saw horses are being taken up by that and two it's gonna probably make a mess with this styrofoam and i just soon it blow around out here and in my garage just gonna take my circular saw and just buzz this stuff off i'm not gonna worry about running it against a straight edge all righty Two more pieces to cut, give that 45 minutes to dry, and then we'll sand it. All right, I've given it about an hour, so I've got 220 on here, and we're just gonna sand this. I'm not gonna sand it real hard, just enough to smooth it out. Butter smooth. So I'll flip this over, do the other side and the edges, and then we'll primer it one more time. All right, so I took a damp rag and I wiped that down that it was primed. I wasn't worried about the MDF itself soaking up moisture. So I wiped it down and got all the film off from the sanding and I primed that one side and it's sitting over there drying. And I thought during that time, I'll go ahead and start to glue some of these uh, panels together. And what I'm using is this Loctite foam board PL300 to do it. And it specifically says on there for polystyrene, which is what this is. I'll put some on here kind of smear it and glue it down. Now it takes seven days to cure and I'm not waiting seven whole days before I finish this project, I can tell you that. But hopefully within a couple, three, four hours, it'll be bonded enough it'll hold it. I'm only gonna cut a small chunk off. I'm not gonna have a big bead. And I'll run a bead around the outside edge, not too close to the edge, enough that it'll squeeze out and cover it really well, but not so much I get a bunch of squeeze out over the edge that I have to clean up. And then I'll just put some in here. And I also took a damp rag and washed these off. See, I gotta make sure I got my boards lined up right. Okay. Gonna kind of move it back and forth like you would tile it and then get my edges lined up. All right. Beautiful. So the other piece, I'll wait till I'm done primering because I'm using that as my primering board and then we'll glue it on and then this part will all be set. In the meantime, we'll let that dry and I'll paint the other side, sand and repeat. Alrighty, so I've sanded the cover and it's ready to paint. Now I had to take this border trim down for them to get my new HVAC system in and I thought, well, I'll have it down and might as well just finish it too. Bottom side was raw. They never painted it. They painted this in place. So I've sanded both sides. I primered the bottom side with that Benzenza primer. So for the nail holes, I put this red stuff in there that you see and it's called Bondo's glazing and spot putty. You just put a little on a putty knife, smear it in the hole, wait about an hour and now I'm ready to sand and when it's all done I'm left with just a red spot and so I'll finish sanding this and I'm going to primer this side also just so I don't have to worry about this Bondo red stuff coming through my paint. So this is what it looks like before you sand and then after you sand. Okay so all ready to paint this cover. I'm using Sherwin Williams Duration Acrylic Latex Paint for interior. I, what I did was is I took the old cover down there to them 
They had them color match it the best they can. It got really close, but we'll see what it looks like when it's dry. Now I added about 30, 40 mils of water to this to dilute it just a hair. Since it's an acrylic latex paint, you can add water. They recommend that you don't dilute. I think it's more than 30%. So I'm way under that. And then the other stuff I put in there is this M1 extender. What that helps to do is, is when you spray, it'll help the paint level out and get a glass smooth finish. And also when it's hot like this, it'll slow down the drying so it doesn't dry dry so quick on you. So I'm using my Fuji Mini Mite Platinum 5. It's an HVLP sprayer and we're going to spray the bottom side of this and by that time the trim part will be ready to sand. And it's just that easy. I use the cardboard as you saw to get my pattern down. I spray both directions because I spray lightly. Okay, that looks really good. Like I say, it looks a little orangey peely, if you will, right now. But with that M1 extender in there, it'll cause it to flatten out. And honestly, this is the backside, so I don't care if it doesn't completely flatten out. But it takes two hours to touch dry, four hours to recoat. So I'm not gonna have enough time today to get this sanded and painted again. Two hours, what I'm gonna do is turn this over, paint the face side of it, and then it'll just have to sit till tomorrow. But in the meantime, I got this all set up and I'm only spraying the surface that's gonna be exposed that you can see. The bottom surface, I just primered and that's all I'm gonna do to it. So it's been sanded, everything's hidden really well. I'm gonna spray this and then this will dry it. And then tomorrow I can actually put this back up. Now with this being a white paint, and that white primer, it makes it a little tough to see where you sprayed. They lay down really well. And honestly, if it doesn't glass smooth finish, I'm gonna be okay with it because it's gonna somewhat match my textured walls. And so it almost looked like somebody textured this and the ceiling and the walls when they did it. And it's too early to tell. Once it dries, you'll know how slick it is. All righty, it's been about an hour and a half and it was dry enough to touch. So I've rolled it over and we're gonna get it painted. Now this side has been sanded, but it does have a little bit of a texture to it. And it's basically because I used that roller for the primer. I'm not gonna worry about that because honestly, it looks pretty similar to my texture on my walls. So I'm gonna paint this and if it follows that, I'm gonna be happy with it. And my original plan was to paint, sand, and paint two coats on this. But I think the first coat covers well and looks good. I'm gonna leave it alone and not paint a second coat. And if I got enough paint left in that can, I'm gonna go ahead and turn over that trim piece and paint the bottom side. Even though I said it wasn't going to, I got the paint in the can, might as well use it. So the finish come out really, really nice on the cover part. I'm really happy with it. It has kind of that orange peel look, but like I said, when you see the inside of my walls and how they're textured, you're gonna see that that almost kind of matches it. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. Now the border here, the frame, it turned out okay. It's not as good as I would like. And I think it's because I wound up using a brush instead of a roller to do the primering. I thought it'd be cheaper and quicker to do it with a brush. This goes to show that cheap and quick is not the way to do it all the time. So the next thing I need to do is install this styrofoam onto the cover. Now I got three sections here as you saw. Each one of these is an R20 so theoretically that's an R60 which is way better than probably the R.5 I had with that little half inch piece of particle board that they used before and it fits really nice there's plenty of overlap underneath here so that there's no gaps. All right I got this down on the concrete here with a towel on it so I don't screw up my finish. I want a hard surface to put this on with. So let me make sure I got the right direction because one way is a little narrower than the other. I'm using the same Loctite PL300 foam board adhesive and uh, purposely this side being rough and stuff like it is is great because that way it'll stick more. That's why I didn't sand this side before I painted it. Here goes nothing. Give it a little twist, a little shake back and forth, just like if you was putting tile in. Okay, that's beautiful. I'll let this sit for a little bit. I'll get set up, put it all back together. I gotta have this up inside the attic first before I can put the trim on, otherwise I'm not getting this in there. Okay, I got the insulated cover set up here. It's sitting on some blankets so I don't screw up my new surface. So I got the trim piece up. I got it clamped in place. I got cardboard under the clamp there so it doesn't mar up my clean surface. It's a little bit tricky and kind of a pain to get it in here because as you can see, the trim piece is almost as wide as the hallway. And basically I use the caulking line in the front and back to line it up. I got a finish nailer here. I'm putting two and a half inch finish nails in. I'm gonna get a couple of nails put in the corners. I can take the clamps off and we'll finish nailing this up. The biggest thing is making sure I get far enough over that I hit wood. They had busted up my sheetrock right here when they got the old unit out or put the new one in and that's why that piece flew like it did. But luckily the trim covers it all and I didn't have to repair it. 
I'm probably overkilling on the nails and that's okay but the reason I'm doing so is this new lid weighs way more than the old one and I really didn't want to have to drill and do screws and have to cover those so I'm just going to do extra nails. So the nails didn't quite get driven all the way. I've got a little nail punch here that I'm using to sink them the rest of the way in. This is all nailed in. All the nail heads are sunk. One last thing I want to do is I want to insulate this edge so that when this lid sits on it, it's airtight. And I'm just going to use three quarter inch weather stripping to do that. And I'm just going to put it about halfway between the exposed area is all. Nothing fancy. That way, when that lid sits on there, there's any little gap. This weather stripping will take care of that. Alrighty, so I'm a hair short, so I'll have to get some more. But we just peel this off. I gotta get a whole nother 10 foot section just to do that little bit. Time to put the lid down and see how it sits. So I cut this so tight that I had very little leeway in any direction. When they put some of this together, they had nails sticking through, so I had to hammer those down. And where these joist hangers are, the nails on them were sticking out a little bit, so I had to kind of hammer on those to flatten them out a little bit. And now it should fit. You're always so careful until you get the first scratch. And then it's game over. Absolutely beautiful. Now I'm just going to fill these nail holes, touch it up, this project will be done. Before I fill these nail holes, I do want to run some caulking on the front and back side. I'd love to on the outsides of this, but it's too narrow for me to get in there. What I'm using is Sherwin-Williams Shermax. It's white. I wish I had clear, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead with the white. I'm not going to wait around to try and get some clear. Basically, this is an elastomeric type caulking, meaning it stretches. The smallest drill bit I could find, I drilled a hole in the end of this because I want just an itty bitty bead. And then I've got a wet paper towel here. I'll wet my finger and wipe it. You always want a wet finger when you do this. It smears in there much easier if you do that. And now I'm going to take my tape off right away so it doesn't bridge. If you wait till it dries and pull it and you've got bridging, too much bridging between the caulking and your tape, it'll peel it off. There you go. Nice and clean. Okay, I'll do the other side. All right, all I got left is these nail holes. I'm not gonna use the Bondo like I did before because one, I don't wanna risk using a putty knife and gouging my work. And two, I don't wanna have to come back and sand this whole thing and make a big dusty mess. So what I'm gonna do is use this all flex spackling, put a little on a putty knife like this, and then just take my finger and smear it in the nail holes. Yes, I'll have to come back after this and sand, but it'll be just a spot sanding over the nail holes themselves. And I am leaving just just a little bit, kind of an overfill. So when I sand, I don't have to reapply this twice. All right, so I went to Home Depot and got a whole roll of weather stripping just for about six inches. I put that in there. That's all fixed. I took some 220 sandpaper and a sanding block so it would stay flat. And sanded all the spackling spots and got them cleaned off. Here they're really smooth and all the spackling's off except for where the holes are. Now, before we go to finally finishing this, I got one more little thing I'm gonna do. It's kind of a neat little trick. We're gonna see just how well this is working compared to the old one. So when I went to Home Depot and got this roll of weather stripping, I thought, you know what? How can I measure just how well that's working compared to the other one? I come up with an infrared thermometer. So I got this little infrared thermometer. It's a Klein tool. I'll leave a link. And by the way, I'll leave a link to all the tools I've used on this down below. But it was like 65 bucks. And it goes from minus 20 to 700 degrees or some crazy thing. Way more than what I need. I've taken the old cover that we had and kept it so far, thank goodness. And I've kept it in the house here for about an hour or so to get it acclimated to the inside temperature. And I'm gonna take a temp of what the new cover is, the surrounding walls, see how close they are. And I'm gonna take that cover and move it off and I'm gonna measure how hot it is in the attic. Then we're gonna put this on and let it set for a few minutes and measure it and see. You can see it's got two laser lights. However far away you are from the subject, determines how wide those two dots are. And basically what it's telling you is it's a circumference that it's measuring. Now this particular one can measure high, low, average. I've got it on average. Basically all you do is push the button and point and read the temp. Now I've got my air conditioner set at 78 degrees in here. So that's saying 77.9. And when you let off, it holds the temp that you got. The wall itself it says 77.9, 77.9. So that's well acclimated. All right, so let's take a reading on this side first. And I don't have to, like I said, you don't have to hold it close. So I can hold it just right here. I'm getting 77 on this side here, 78.1. Let's go here right below 76.6. And then on this side, 
77. So I expect it to be a little warmer up top because that's the attic. And honestly, my insulation's kind of crappy and needs to be redone, but that's another video. Dead in the center of this, 77.5 is almost the exact same temperature as it is on each side of it. It's really nice. Now, yes, it's not as cool as on each side of the walls. Like this is a bedroom and so there's cool air on that side. This is the hallway, there's cool air on that side. And so naturally these should be a little cooler than what's facing the attic. I expect it to be hotter here because there's not really any insulation and my HVAC system itself sits right there. On average, it's pretty much the same as what the lid is. I'll shoot several areas and get kind of a range of what it is in this attic. I have actually radiant shield barrier on my roof. It's kind of a reflective material, it's supposed to help cool it a little bit, but whatever. So let's read 94.5, that's 101 and a half, 98.4, the furnace itself, 91. It's definitely hotter up here. Top surface of the insulation says 98.4. Now let's put this old one back in place, which is a half inch. It's probably got about an R or 0.5. I'll let it sit for a few minutes to acclimate and we'll take a new reading. All right, yeah, I've let this sit about 30 minutes. I got plastic and paper up because I'm gonna paint this and I don't want to get it on my walls. And I know if I wanted a true, true reading, I'd need to probably leave this set for three or four hours. I mean, 30 minutes, we ought to get something. And according to my phone, it's saying, it's saying it's 86 degrees outside and we know it's 90 plus in the attic. So now with just this in here and no insulation, there is a two degree difference in some areas between the outside and the inside. Let's see what the center of the lid tells us. We're 84 degrees, that's six degrees higher hotter than what I had the air conditioning set at. I had the air setting at 78. And again, that's probably even more if I would let it acclimate longer. It just goes to show that insulation is making a huge difference, not just on the lid, but on the frame around it. All right, so as you've guessed, I'm just gonna hand paint this. I've got a three inch ultra stiff purdy angled brush. I'm gonna use and just paint right out of the can. I did pre-wet the brush with water. You should always do that so it helps make it easier for cleanup. I do want to repaint paint over the caulking. Well, I might be a little bit partial, but I think this turned out wonderful. Got a nice fresh coat of paint. It's clean. It's got a brand new lid. Fits all the way across. It's nice and tight. It's well insulated. It's got a nice insulation around the edge so no light or air leaks through. It's at least six degrees cooler than when the old one was there. So that's going to be some energy savings there. And I have to give a thanks to Sherwin-Williams because they match this paint perfectly. If you didn't know I repainted this and you came and looked up here, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The texture on this turned out wonderful. It matches the texture on the walls. It almost looked like somebody spray textured this and the walls and got painted. And if you like this simple little DIY project or repair, there's a playlist right here where I show you some other little simple repair projects you can do on your own home. So until next time, happy DIYing.